Now, the way Vanishing Point works, it's basically a two-step process. You need to draw a grid that matches the perspective of your photograph, and then you either paint or edit inside of that grid. So we'll start by drawing the grid. I've got my Create Plane tool here, and that's selected by default. And then I'm just going to click at portions that make sense here. So I'm going to click along these boards. That's the perspective I want to match. So I'm going to click right here to set one point. I'm going to click over here to set another point. I'm going to click down here someplace, roughly like so, to set that point. And then finally, I'm going to set the final point. So it's just a four-point draw here in order to draw a rectangle in perspective. And then I'm going to scale that rectangle by dragging the side handles. And I'm dragging the side handles, notice that, not the corner handles because dragging the corner handles actually changes the angle of the perspective grid. So notice this keeps everything nice and aligned with these boards. And now what I want to do is I want to clone away, not the dog, I like the dog, he's looking great there, but I want to clone away this brush and this cable thing back here. And I'm going to do that using the clone tool. And this is basically like the stamp tool, the standard stamp tool inside of Photoshop, outside the vanishing point filter, the one difference being that it clones in perspective. So I'm going to go grab that clone tool. I'm going to press the Alt key or the Option key on the Mac and click at some point to set the source for my clone. So I'm going to Alt or Option click down here, sort of toward the front of the photograph, and that way it'll interpolate down. It'll sample down in size so that we'll get as much detail as we possibly can. I'm also going to increase the size of my brush by pressing a bracket key. I'm pressing the right bracket key to do that. Standard stuff inside of Photoshop, by the way. And now I'm going to, once I get, see how I've got this cursor that's actually changing size to fit the perspective as I move it. Once I've got it in position here, I'm going to click and drag in order to cover up that brush. And then I'll go ahead and release. Now I've got a couple of problems here. See this rough edge at this point? That's because I ran out of image from which to clone. So I'm just going to go ahead and turn off the align checkbox. That's that final checkbox on the screen there. And I'm going to move my cursor until I get it in a good position once again. And I'm just going to drag over that place that had the bad transition. Now, thanks to the fact that I have healing turned on, this healing function up here at the top of the screen, the clone stamp tool goes ahead and heals as I paint with it. So heal is a toggle function. You can either turn it on or off inside Vanishing Point. And now I'm just going to go ahead. I think I'll move my source point just a little in so I don't have that problem with picking up stuff that's outside the screen there. So I'm alt-clicking right there to set a new source point. This way I'm not going to run the risk of cloning anything outside the image. Then I'll move my cursor where I want it to be, more or less in a position. I'll paint over the cable, and it disappears. Wonderful, wonderful tool for cloning away objects on flat surfaces like this. Now, you're not going to match the perspective of a dog, for example, but of a flat surface like a floor, as we have here. I'll click OK in order to accept this change. So this is before, this is after. Wonderful, wonderful function.